Am I having issues here? Hmm. With what? I think my screen froze on me. Yeah, I froze. Just a little bit of technical difficulties. Chase, can you handle plunder? I've the card is shown. Can you just go over it? Well, plunder used to be thief, right? No, it used to be a spell. I thought. Well, yeah, a spell. Something. And it deals two damage and adds a random spell card costing two or less to your hand. Yeah. Does that does that mean any spell? For any... Yeah, it's sort of like the smuggling ring, I was about to say. Alright, so now we're back online. Sorry about that, folks. It's never really happened before, but, you know, we're back online anyway. And yeah, plunder, I think, is sort of like the smuggling ring, except you're dealing damage instead of getting gold, but you're still getting that spell to your hand. Southport Captain. Now, this is a change on Redbeard. Um, Redbeard used to be a legend at 5 gold, and you've gained 5 when he's played. It still has that ability, except it's been re reduced to 3, and its stats have been changed to 2, too. You're basically, like, cutting this unit in half and making it sort of like a shell of what it used to be, but still kind of maintaining that ability. If you like Redbeard, you'll probably like this card more or less. It kind of works with the same abilities. Not much else to say about that. It's an epic, so it's rarity has been reduced, too. You probably pull it easier now. Alright, Witch Doctor has changed. Three gold, still an epic, still three attack, now five health, and it works with the undead archetype. Your undead units gain 1-1 one, one when slain, or, I'm sorry, your undead units gain 1-1 one, one when he's played, and when slain, give your undead units another 1-1 one, one boost. This is probably why, if you're running a new Undead Archetype, Pirate Warlock is going to be the combo, because a lot of cards from Pirates and Warlocks both support this Undead Faction Archetype. Uh, um, yeah, not really much else to say about that. Just, yeah, that's pretty much a decent boost for um, the Undeads. House of Daggers has been changed from the Guild of Scoundrels. It is now giving no attack, and it's actually destroying itself in the process. It's four, uh, four gold, three health, which is kind of problematic with its ability, because when it, your ma, when a turn begins, or when our turn begins, House of Dagger suffers two damage, and you gain two gold. So you're basically getting four gold out of this unit over the course of two turns. It's like you're investing four gold, and getting that four gold later at a different time in shares, which is kind of funny. But regardless, I think this is probably going to be a greed deck um, structure. I don't know if it's going to be used, though, because of its ability. And it's problematic with the suffer two damage and getting two gold. You're kind of basically just getting four gold out of it instead of what you would be. You'd be getting six gold, because if... Structures used to be five gold. Uh, no, no, five gold. If structures used to be five health, then you'd be getting two gold out of it. Unless you could buff it with Crusader health buffs, then I would say you can gain more gold. But other than that, I think this is really just a low potential greed deck kind of card. King Crab, Chase, I'll let you handle this one. King. King Crab. King Crab. Looks like one of those new cards. Yes. You can only move side to side. Attack! <laughs> oh. It, hello. Take, take uh, it to the attack. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, do you have anything else to uh, hear about, the, or say about this card? It can be pretty useful depending upon what kind of deck you're using. Yeah. Well, horizontal movement is definitely something new. We haven't seen that before in any card. This is probably why that range card, the Phantom Strike, could be using a combo with it. Uh, but it's 8-8 eight, eight kind of makes it that powerhouse for such a low cost, too. Hence why it might be a legendary. Moving on, Merchant's Estate has not changed whatsoever, it's still a construct, it's health is still there. 
Uh, moving on, mugging. For gold, return an enemy to its owner's hand. And you gain one gold for it. I would say this is more of a mid-game removal type thing. I don't know if you would use this gen like all the time for removal. It definitely is a handy removal, but um, yeah, I would I would say not much else going on there. Greed deck maybe potential for it. I use this in a greed deck. It used to be gained two gold. But, um, I guess it's now only one goal, which is fine. One-Eyed Maddie has been changed. Has, Maddie has been changed. I think that's probably because of its burn deck usage, how people used it in the burns and whatnot. But, uh, anyway, let me explain how this card works. It is now a mage, and it's when played, add a random mage to your hand. This card will work with the mage archetype. I don't know if this is a card you want in there all the time, though, because I haven't actually figured out where the mages stand in terms of um, factions, where to put them. But other than that, it's two attack, four health type stats may make it seem okay, I guess. It's four gold. Do you have anything else to add on that, Chase? Pretty much said it all. Alright, nice. See which, this card has been changed, it's health and attacks have been flipped, it's a 4 gold now, but it's adding the cursed pirates to your hand. I would say this is just another one of those, if you want to have a horde deck with the, um, with these guys, you may want to throw the sea witch in there for its cursed pirates, definitely useful. It's also a mage too, so who knows, Maddie might, uh, give you a sea witch. Southport Cannoneer. It used to be Stubbs. You can see now it's clearly being changed. It still has that explosive ability. I don't know if it still has that four gold cost. Has it always been four gold, Chase? As the Sea Witch? No, the Cannoneer. The Cannoneer, I'm pretty sure it stayed four gold. Right. If not, it was more. Yeah. Other than that, it's given a health buff. Two attacks. It not can be modified, so hooray. You'll probably be seeing that a little bit more. Seeing it how it is a common. So. We'll see how that card works from there. Special delivery. It's a focus spell. You're dealing three damage to all enemies in a 5 by 5 area. So you're dealing with a Rakanoth type explosion. Dealing three damage, but you must have focus on it. I would definitely say this is some difficult removal to use. Three damage, you probably get rid of some of the stuff, but um, mm -hmm. not really sure what else to go from there. Just kind of a removal type card, I would say. Damage. Alright, moving on to Salahar Voyager. This is a card that you might use in monster decks, hence the reason why having a probably a Crusader pirate monster deck it's because when played you may also play a monster card for seven less this turn so say if you have a monster unit or monster card which we'll get to and you'll see kind of the costs and what can be played salahar is very useful to have in a monster deck it it's um reducing cost ability will have it reinforce your attack or your offense a lot easier all right, moving on to Murderous Assault. Chase, you'll have that one? Have which one? Murderous Assault. Well, he's practically the, um... Isn't there another card for the Vikings? No. The, um, for the... The second people. What are they? That destroy your target. Well, I think it was murder, but it was also a pirate card. This is basically like a more vicious murder card. I mean, you're not losing anything, and you're still destroying a target. I would say this is, pr and since it's a common, you'll probably see it a lot in pirate decks as removal. Definitely. It's definitely a dangerous card. 
definitely a dangerous card you'll be seeing a lot more. Moving on to Villaroth. Villaroth hasn't changed. I think his health has been increased to 7. That's really about it for Villaroth. Good job, buddy. Good job. Uh, Bobbert has now been changed to Robins. Dread Pirate Robins. When played, add two merchants' favors to your hand. And that's kind of it for him. It's 4-5. Still range. Still melee. I guess. I don't, I'm not sure if it's both. Maybe. But anyway, it's 7 gold. You're adding the merchants' favors. Definitely a card to play when using the greed deck. The merchants' favors will be handy. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Well, when we get to the part. Which may not be for a little bit, but anyway, and it, the merchant's favors will be useful, and you will see why. It's four or five stats, make him a bit iffy for seven gold, but other than that, you'll see his potential. And that's it for the pirates, really, generally about that. Um, still, they have some gold still, they now have some rallies. A lot of stuff of it has been thrown into the pirate factor, faction. Moving on to Warlocks. Chaotic Storm has changed. It is now not just dealing one damage to every unit or everything on the field. It now deals one damage to a random enemy four times. So basically you're just zapping different things for one gold. Useful to get rid of rats, in my opinion, because those rats only have one health. And since it also is dealing it four times... Some low, like a 3 or 4 health unit can be taken out by Chaotic Storm very easily. Moving on. Flame. Deal, deal 3 damage. It, I guess it's really just a name change and a cost reduction. It used to be burn. But that's really all I got for that. Witch Bolt has not changed a bit. Um, Acolyte has been changed. 2 gold, 1, 2 stats, and add a zombie each, or, yeah, blah, add a zombie to your hand after each attack. Now, zombie is basically the other part of the horror deck. You have cursed pirates, and you have zombies. Now, the warlock's going to be focusing on more of the getting the zombies out while the pirates have their cursed pirates. Basically, this acolyte is no longer boosting any spell damage, any effect damage. It's now adding zombies each time after you attack. So if you want a horde deck, you may want to keep this thing in your deck, and you may want to keep it alive, too, to keep a steady increase of zombies in your hand. Awaken Rage. Chase, you handle that? Awaken Rage. Yes. Let's see. Well, it's two cards in one, practically. Yeah. It, it, with, it's another yeah. one of those rampage cards. Same thing as the Viking kind of thing. Mm hmm. Which is pretty good. Yeah. And you get the plus three and plus three. Yeah. It kind of gives that Awaken thing kind of a reemergence. I know back when the Warlock Academy was released and Awaken was the brand new mechanic, the Monster Island expansion is kind of like a little increase to awakens you're going to be seeing awakens a bit more in um the game now there's definitely going to be some cards working off of that and with saris being increased to having three of him per deck you definitely may want to take an opportunity of this awakened mechanic increase dark bender dark bender you may have seen back when you were fighting the warlocks in single player um if you've seen him you've seen him you studied him you've looked at him you're like what happened to Sorcerer? Sorcerer is now going to have flying. It's 2-2 two, two stats for 2 golds. I would say this card is early game. I That's pretty much it. Other than that, Dark Bender... I have not much going on there. Flame of Eternity, I think it's remained the same. I don't know about the cost, but it's basically the same other way. Grotesque has been the same. Inferno Aurora, the card art taken from Breath of Flame. Breath of Fire? Something, something, something Breath. But anyway, it's another one of those giving a friendly unit Aurora ability. Deal 2 damage to 